and welcome to week 5. This is Ludmilla Adams with Fashion Chalkboard. Today in our 52 weeks, one tip for every week of the year series for fashion, flat sketching and more with Adobe Illustrator, we are going to learn how to create the sparkle sequence with components that are actual pixels. And we're going to divide this video. I was trying to find out how to, or actually struggling with how to teach this because I want to give you guys short segments. So we're going to do three different videos. Part one is going to be really, really short and quick review for easy beginner level. So you can skip it if you already know how to do this, how to do a flat looking sequence. Intermediate level would be this right here, which is a reminder how to separate these components quickly and color this to make it look a little bit more alive. And then the advanced part comes in when we are going to finally use components that you can scan in. So you can scan in foils, you can scan in whatever sparkles. I had a beautiful bouquet. And then in the advanced part, I'm hoping to also cover, so hopefully you stay with me, how to recolor a brush that is actually not vector art anymore, right inside of Illustrator. Of course, you can do this in Photoshop, but you can also achieve some cool results inside of Illustrator. Remember that you can download these files with the different colorways at the free member section at fashionchalkboard.com so you can take it apart and see what I did there. Okay, so how do we draw a really flat sequence? So I'm just gonna work with tools that don't even require you to use the pen tool. If you've been struggling with this, this is your lucky day because all we're gonna use is pretty much this palette right here. And we're going to start with the ellipse tool and we're gonna just press with shift and drag, which creates a perfect circle. If you let go of shift, you see how it's an oval. So there we go, something like this. And right away we can put some color in there and maybe fill the inside, something like that. Right on top of that, I'm going to draw with my polygon tool. And we can actually, first of all, click away if we want. And then we can just hover over the center if we want to. And if you press with Alt, you can actually draw around the center. And if you add Shift, it stays kind of centered. If I move this over, that's actually a little bit better. And if you select more than one object, if you just take your selection tool, you click and drag, you'll see how your line tools come up. So even if this was a little bit wonky like this, I can just select these two. It's always more than one object, right? And then press on this right here, which is going to align it on the center horizontally and this one right here as well. All right, and then another simple tool is your line segment tool. So all we need to do is just click and drag from the corners of the polygon tool art onto the circle. Just like this. And then I just take my ellipse tool again, maybe with white, just shift drag a tiny circle into the center. And then if I want to manually move this up, all right, so then the only thing left for me to do is um, I like to not have these lines be black. So I can just select it all, click on here. What I like to do is with shift on my eyedropper tool, just pick up that original orange. So that's invisible, obviously orange on orange. So I can just go and make it dark orange on orange. And you can see the contrast right here. Or in my case, I did it actually a little bit lighter. It's something like this. All right, that's it. Um, what we do next is creating a brush with an overlap. So let me just remind you, and you will see this in the following two videos if you stay with me. When I just put this in here by itself as a pattern brush, we're not going to create an overlap. So you can already see in the preview that that's not really happening. Okay, so let's compare what does that mean if I just take this line, put this right here, you can see how there's no overlap. So the trick is, is to create a box that is smaller than the object, send it to the back. You can go to object, arrange, send to back and take out the fill and the stroke. So now what happens is I have to select both of these components, drag it in here. I'm going to say pattern brush. Okay. And you can see already there's a little bit of overlap and I'm going to say no corner for now. And when I click here and click here, you can see how there's now an overlap. So what's the trick with this box? Um, no fill, no stroke, that needs to be done. And then also the size of the box determines how much is visible of your art. So see how big this box was right here. 
let's do this again with a smaller box and you have to draw a new box so let's see here i'm just going to make a smaller box like a sliver right there send it to the back make sure always to double check that your box in the back has no fill and no stroke make sure also that you pick it up sometimes we forget it like right now i'm actually missing a little line right here but it's okay for now i'm gonna click and drag and drag it in here pattern brush okay and you guys can already see in the preview how small the view of the actual artwork is and the overlap is quite extreme see that right there so that's it for this introduction easy video i hope you hear my crickets in the background they're singing then it's dark outside so they start to sing but um without rambling on let's go to video two